To start something, I just tap the icon, and the application elegantly glides up, just like that. And here's contacts. You can see it's really simple too. Just one button to create a new contact. If I want to scroll through my contacts list, I just give it a flick. It responds to my touch physically with this beautiful little momentum, this bounce. It's like a physical object that I'm just touching with my gestures. If I want to open somebody, look at Sophia down here, I just give her a tap, and she opens up with this nice little zoom. Here's Sophia, and you can see it's really simple to get at all her information as well. Everything's at my fingertips. These direct manipulation gestures have let us keep this screen clean without any buttons or junk to utilize that, just touch and go. But as John said earlier, our touch is special. It goes beyond the screen. You can see if I touch down below in the gesture area, my finger here, it lights up. It's responding to my touch kind of like magic. It's like something organic. This opens up a whole new world of gestures. Let's start with a simple one. If I want to go back to the list, I can just flick back in the gesture area from right to left, like I'm turning the page in a book. Just like that, I zoom back out. Now what's great about this is that it means that all basic navigation is all just gestures. Give it a flick, give it a tap to open, give it a little swipe to go back. There's no buttons or anything cluttering up the screen to do the most fundamental navigation. So, let me show you another gesture that we can use. If I want to start something new, I start in the gesture area and swipe up. And my launcher slides up like a sheet of glass right over what I'm doing. And there's the familiar palm launcher with three columns of gorgeous icons. If I look at some photos, I just tap that. And now my photos application also slides right up. Again, the UI for photos is very simple, just that direct manipulation I showed you. I want to look at some pictures, I tap on them. I want to scroll through my pictures, I just flick through, find the one I want, tap on that one. Even here, I just flip through stuff to get to what I'm looking for. And then when I'm done, I just give it that flick back, and I'm back where I came from. If I want to start something new, anywhere I am, I just bring up the launcher. I don't have to go to a new place. Don't lose my context. Take a note, just tap the icon, and there we go. Note slides up. I start down here and I drag out, bring up this quick launch wave. And you can see here's those favorite icons. When I release, I switch that application instantly. So that was one action. I still have one touch access to everything I want, but everything is kept simple and clean. Now, this is that kind of uh, newness you were hoping to see here today, right? Yeah. Let me show you what happens when I press the center button. I zoom out, and here's all my activities, notes, contacts, and photos, each in their own card, right where I left them. I can go into one of these activities, look at something else, and when I go back out to my card, I can see exactly where I left off. My cards are live, completely. And this makes them so much more powerful than favorite icons ever could be, because I can really see what's going on in my workspace. And because it's a workspace, we of course let you organize it. So if I want to put notes at the front, I just press and hold to pick it up, drag it over, and release. Just like that. Put contacts at the front, drag and release. Now, if you want to clean up your deck of cards, you're done with one of these, you're done with a particular activity, that's easy too. I just throw it away off the top of the screen. Palm has always made sure you never worry about losing your data. All your changes are saved automatically. You won't find a save button anywhere in this UI. So when I'm done with notes, I can just throw it off the top. This allows me to focus on what I'm trying to do, not on running programs or saving files or all those computer things. It's so simple and direct, there's almost no need for UI. There's no closed boxes, no 
drag handles, no window panes, no buttons. You just <coughs> have these cards, they shuffle and sort, and when you're done, you throw them away. Now, how's that for some real? So you can see this little stack of photos in the upper right corner, right next to Sophia's name. That indicates that her contact is linked from multiple sources. If I tap on Sophia, I can see her card open up, and I can see there's three sources there. I tap on that, there's information from Google, from Outlook, and Facebook. But the best part is I can focus on Sophia the person. I can just look at all her phone numbers here, and I don't get duplicate entries for information which is redundant. And more importantly, I don't have to worry about was her home number on Facebook or was it on Google? All the information is brought into one place for your convenience, but the data remains independent as it should. We apply these same principles of synergy in the calendar. Those accounts that I showed you in contacts, they're here in my calendar as well. I can see I have a work meeting at 9 in the morning today and some Google meetings, uh, Google Calendar events, my meditation at 4. It's all put together into one list, color-coded. Now some days, getting all that information in one place can be a little overwhelming. So, of course, we allow you to focus on just the information you care about. If I just tap in the header here, I can see all the different calendars that are integrated through Synergy into Calendar here. I've got all these different Google calendars, and there's my work. So if I just want to focus on that, the other events disappear, and now I can just worry about the one thing I need to focus on tomorrow. Now notice we have this gray cross patch time here. That indicates busy time on other calendars. So you never have to worry about accidentally double booking yourself if you are uh, focusing. Now one of the things Palm has always been known for is intelligently showing you as much calendar information as possible. So here again, we've done something special with the time that you're not using. Right after John's staff at 9, I have this empty block of time, 6 hours free. We compress that time. You can see these little accordion folds here at the top of the screen. So that the next events are visible. That way you're never surprised by an event that you didn't see coming just because you've got some empty time. If I want to use that time, I just tap on it. It opens up. And as Ed said earlier, Palm has always focused on the most brutal of the competition, pen and paper. So if I want to utilize any of this free time, that's easy. I can just tap on it and type. Just like that. Now let's look at Synergy and email. Once again, I have a single list of all my email accounts. I can look at all my folders from one of these accounts here, or I can focus on my favorite folders in this group here at the top of the screen. We've even given you an all inbox folder, so you can go to a single place to check all your new messages. Of course, email works just like you expect on the desktop, with attachments and inline images and everything. If I want to compose a new message, that's easy too, I just tap the one button. And because we're coming from multiple accounts, we always let you choose which account you actually want to send the message from. Although we'll set the appropriate one automatically based on whether you're replying or what inbox you're looking at. Now, I can type an email address straight up. And as you'd expect, if I start typing, we automatically start searching through contacts. Now, one of the most painful parts about email on mobile is that you're really locked into one thing at a time. If I want to look at another email while I'm writing this one, I'd have to hurry up and send it off or save it as a draft and dig up my drafts folder again. Well, cards on WebOS means that I don't lose my rhythm. If I want to look at another email in my inbox, I just flip back to the inbox card. I find the email I'm looking for, and as many compose windows as I have open are sitting there waiting for me. I can pick them up whenever I want to. I'm not locked into one activity. I can flow between reading, replying, composing, 
just like I'm used to on the desktop. 